Draymond Green and the Warriors taking on the Magic. Critical game for Golden State. They desperately need these wins. And we are less than four minutes into the action last night. Draymond gets called for a foul. Legs, he doesn't like it. No, and I didn't like the call either. It's incidental contact, but here you go. Draymond venting, and it's going to lead to this shortly after. Very next whistle, and Draymond Green loses complete control of his emotions. That came 20 seconds later. That was a foul that was called against Andrew Wiggins. Maybe should have been on Ben Caro. Doesn't matter. One way or another, Draymond loses control. Well, first off, why put your hand on the referee? Like, you have the referee's attention. You don't need to touch him. That incites the first technical foul. But it's the pursuit of the frustration afterwards, which is what, as a former player or teammate, it would make me exhausted. I'm yeah. tired of it. And they look exhausted by it. Ultimately, the official has heard enough, and he throws Draymond out. And just look at the reaction of Steph Curry and that Golden State bench. Tim, you can just tell they're just finished. And even before that, Steph Curry was just staring off into space as he watched Draymond walk to the tunnel. You see him here shaking his head. And he was actually a little bit of a malaise for a few minutes after this incident. Let me show you how it worked out because in the end, actually, Golden State won with a five-point lead. Here's a dagger three from Steph. And then look at the emotion that he would show. First, he gives you, you know, the good night thing. And then he's going to kicking over chairs and in, in just letting out all of the emotion of the night. And then you see there's Damon Green afterwards. Well, watch sort out of passes there for the moment. He daps him and he keeps walking. It was a tough night all the way around. Let's Bye. hear. Oh, I said, we, need, we need him. He knows that. We all know that. Um, so whatever it takes to keep him on the floor and be available, that's what's got to happen. Especially at this point in the year. So it's a tough way to start the game. Uh, yeah, too bad. It was unfortunate. Um, he deserved it. Um, and, um, you know, he'll... He'll bounce back. I'm just proud of the guys um, for uh, stepping up. So here we are at the top of a new hour, and so a lot of people are just joining us all across the country here this morning. Legs, what, what is the first thought in your mind as we watch this happen last night? That's as selfish as it gets. You have a player operating in a vacuum of his own emotions, and he put that before everything. He put that before the franchise. He put that before his teammates. He put that before Steph Curry. This team is desperate to win games. Steph Curry is desperate to try to play in the postseason. You can see by the way he's carrying himself, and you just won't stop. You know where this is leading, and he had all the time in the world between the first tech and the ejection because the official did not want to throw him out of that game. He gave him no choice. And so in that moment, you're making a decision. Nothing is more important than my desire to vent my emotions right now, despite how it's going to affect my team. I just feel like Draymond Green is a walking contradiction. When I listen to his podcast and I watch him, I'm like, oh, there's such a heightened sense of awareness around everything happening on the court, but there's a lack of awareness with himself. And Stephen Curry deserves so much better. Some of one of the greatest players to ever play in the game of basketball. And here we are talking about the same thing over and over and over again. If Legs and I are exhausted, you don't think Steph Curry's exhausted? He just, look at his face. He's like, same old thing. Same old thing. We're fighting for a 10th spot. And I'm dealing with the same thing that we just dealt with several months ago when we were talking about how many games he was going to be suspended for. What are we doing? Isn't this the exact type of thing? Now, look, I know the situation is different because the Nurkic play involved a physical altercation. Right. And at least in that moment, you were actually physically engaged with another player and, and you lost it and you hit Nurkic and you get suspended. But then, you know, he was sent home for an indefinite amount of time to go apparently deal with this and figure out how to control your emotions in the moment. Now, look, he didn't strike a player in this situation. It's the same impact in the moment. Your team is going to have to go play without you. And I can't overstate even in this particular matchup specifically, we need you to guard their best player. We already have, don't have Kaminga, who's the other guy expected to do that. And now you bail on us four minutes into the game because you put you first in a team sport. There's nothing worse you can do in a locker room. And legs, I'm, I'm never speaking for Steph Curry, but as a player, a former player, when I, if I were to go home after a game like this and I'm talking to my wife, what do you think? Whatever. Whatever, I don't care anymore. Is, is this I, I, It is, or you hear it is what it is. So, so this is a post-game tweet that Draymond Green posted. I had not seen it until now, so good job by our crew. Great dub. Appreciate my dogs holding it down. On to the next one. Bounce back. Same thing. It's, like, but it's just literally as if he's, he's living in an alternate reality by saying that kind of thing. Literally, that's what it looks like he's doing. Like it, these, This is you. You caused it. You're not a victim.
And that's one of the things that bothers me the most about these episodes with him. He, he comes off as if he's been targeted in some way. He's victimized. No, the truth of the matter is this. No player in the history of the NBA has gotten away with more verbal abuse toward officials than Draymond Green. The number of ejections, I think I saw last night. Is it 20? I can't remember. There's a graphic last night. And Bo will get it. It's second yes. or third all time in the history yes. of the league. Yeah, I got news for you. That could easily be doubled or tripled. On the nights he got the first tech, and he has always taken that as an absolute license to ramp it up. Oh, you gave me a T? Well, you're really going to hear something now because he dares people to do something they don't want to do. And the officials don't want to affect the game that way. They don't want to be the topic of conversation the next day. They don't. But you force him into a corner. So my point is he's gotten away with far more than anybody's ever been given license to do, and he still acts like he's somehow being victimized because he's not allowed to vent in this way. And Green, if you're Mike Dunleavy, you're going to do what you need to do in order to get through this season, but inevitably you're thinking, if we have to blow this up. We have to blow this up sooner or later. Now, we can unload draft picks by getting uh, like a trade for a Draymond Green, but how do we put Steph Curry in the best position to help him end his career here in the Golden State Warrior uniform. I, I'm that's told, what you want. He has been ejected 19 times Thank in you. his career, which is the second most of any player in the last 25 years. Again, this this one felt very different to me than the earlier episodes this season, like that one there with Nurkic. That was a spontaneous moment where he just loses it, right? He just snaps. This one, I keep describing it as a slow build. I don't have a better way to describe it. But there was so much time and legs, to your point, the official wanted so desperately not to throw him out of the game so much time elapsed between the time he got the first technical and the time he got the second technical that it looked like when Draymond Green went over to him he asked him about six times in a row what did you think I said that's what I think Draymond Green was saying to him and the official did not want to engage in it because he realizes anything I say back to him right now is going to escalate this even even further so the official walked away and Draymond continued to verbally berate him from a distance and at some point Everyone, it's, it's an official, but he's also a man. Right. And at some point, enough is enough. We've all been out. We've all had these friends before where they keep popping off at the mouth when you go out to the clubs or whatever yes. with your friends, and eventually somebody's going to knock them out. Where were you guys? Man, you deserve to get your ass kicked. Yeah. Like, you, do, you always do this every single time. We're tired of it. Fix your problems. Yeah. I hope it didn't sound like I was blaming the official. I thought no, the no, official no, no. was no. very patient. I I'm saying someone needs to get in there on his own team, and maybe to your point, they've just they've lost their patience with it. Someone needs to just grab him and pull him away before he gets himself thrown out because you could see it coming for such what felt like a very long time. My last point on this, and I think you're going to agree with this, as a player, when I played, okay, you had a lot of different people and entities you're accountable to, right? The, the fans – the, your coaching staff, your family, the organization, nothing was more accountable in my mind than the guy sitting next to me wearing another uniform that right, looked like mine. And, and, and that, that drove me every day, Greeny. And I'm talking, I'm talking about getting ejected. I'm talking about, was I there to help on baseline drive? If, if I wasn't there, I let you down. I never wanted you to feel that way about me as a teammate. Even more, I'll, I'll, I'll hone it down even more. Forget the rest of the roster. Number 30, you owe it to number 30 to be on the court. That's it. It's, it. it's, it's plain as day. And look, he's going to try to, you know, put this in his rearview mirror and let's go on and play the next game. It's very difficult with the cumulative effect of all these incidents. Julian Gosek, can I take this to 20? I, I, I'd, I'd like to stay with this. We'll, I promise you I'm going to get to Jaden Daniels in a minute. Lewis Riddick is standing by. But this just feels important to me because at the end of the day, this team is fighting so desperately just to get into the very back the end of the playoffs. Steph Curry, who is at this point probably made him – probably deserves to be considered one of the 10 greatest players in the history yes. of basketball, is 36 years old, and still playing at practically a first-team All-NBA level. Can they figure that out around him? I mean, th this, it isn't going to be this year. Their coach said they maxed out last year by getting knocked out in the second round. What can they do to get Steph Curry back where we'd all like to see him get at some point between now and the time that he is no longer what he still is? And they're going to make legitimate moves in the offseason. Like what? I mean, I, I don't know exactly what the plan is. I'm not sitting team. with Mike Dunleavy. This is the most expensive team in the history. You got to offload of Draymond Green. I'll tell you that. Well, that's the that's, that's really Draymond what I'm Green, getting. At. I even think Clay Thompson. It's an interesting conversation. Hey, look, and even a guy like Wiggins who hasn't had a good year. I get all this conversation. It's so easy to say that. The truth of the matter is this: you have Steph Curry at 36 years old, still playing at an elite level. It is re your, it's your responsibility as an organization to provide him with a competitive team. 
I don't know if you jettison off these parts that we're talking about, you're going to get the return that you're going to need. Are you going to get younger players that are like all-star caliber players? Why would a team give that up for those veteran players? You're not going to get that, and that's going to be the problem. So it's so easy to say it, to actually accomplish it in a way that gives Steph Curry a competitive environment. That is going to be very difficult to pull off. So if, if that's very difficult to pull off, then at least in a conversation, does Steph Curry, will he want to be there? Like, that's the real question we have to start asking now. Like, if they can't pull it off, you're Steph Curry, is this, I know how much you love Golden State. You want to end your career there more than anywhere else. But is that the best place for you to finish it? I mean, th there's no player, maybe since, besides Kobe Bryant, I can think of, who you more want to see play their whole career in one uniform. Dirk Nowitzki did it in Dallas. Kobe Bryant did it in L.A. Hey. There have been a very select few. The idea of seeing Steph Curry, I know players change teams so frequently now, but the idea of seeing Steph Curry play anywhere else just feels so I agree unimaginable. It's a question he has to ask himself. You know, you know the irony in all of this? This is, a little, to a certain extent, will be swept under the rug because they won the game. Because of Steph Curry, late. Right. Here, if they lose that game, Houston won last night, 10th straight. Yeah. Houston has now caught them, yeah. and yeah. they play next Thursday night. Houston wins that game at home. Golden State's on the outside looking in when this is all said and done. Of That's the play-in. Of the, just of, the of right the to try and win two games right. to get into the playoffs to face Denver, most likely.